Today on ADG Pro, we're going to be taking a look back at Dangerous Dave to try and figure out what the maximum possible score is. It's 99,999. That's the episode! Okay, yeah, I'm not actually going to cop out like that, but answering the question as the maximum attainable score in this game is a little tricky for a number of reasons. So before we set ourselves to task, let's lay out what those challenges actually are. Well, firstly, the actual maximum score is technically infinite, because you can replay secret levels as many times as you want, as every time you access a secret level and return from it, you restart the level you entered it from, and if you go to the secret level again, it too is reset and can have all of its items collected again. So for the purposes of figuring this out, we're going to set a rule that each secret level can only be visited once. Now what this means is that because there's four secret levels, we'll be able to play four of the regular levels twice, because it's possible to collect every valid scoring item in every level and still be able to get into the secret level following. So essentially, with this stipulation in place, we'll be playing a total of 18 levels, six normal levels once, four normal levels twice, and the four secret levels. However, one very big consideration is that not every item in every level is intended to be acquired, or is put somewhere that can only be reached in an incredibly dangerous and often lethal manner. So after going through everything for the sake of making this video, I was able to ultimately assign every single item and every enemy in the game one of four labels, safe, unsafe, deadly, and invalid. Safe items and enemies can either be acquired or defeated by normal means with minimal skill, or have a trick behind acquiring or defeating them which, once learned, is easily repeatable. These are basically the items you should be able to collect and the enemies you should be able to kill without more than an intermediate grasp of the game. Unsafe items are things that you can collect, but either require extreme precision to not end up dead or softlocked, or in one very specific case, requires the use of a minor glitch that allows you to jump up vertical walls if you can fall or jump into the wall from above or below it in exactly the right position, keeping in mind that this glitch does not let you move through walls, only works with the wall if it's on your right side and if you're falling into it, you must be able to safely touch solid ground before you can start jumping up. So beyond this one specific case, this glitch has virtually no other practical uses. Deadly items are things that you can collect. They're in the world, you can reach them, they'll give you points. But upon doing so, you are guaranteed 100% to lose a life. Now, because lives are also a factor here, I'm going to additionally be writing in the minimum number of lives required to be lost to collect all of the deadly items in any of the levels that have them. And lastly, we have invalid items and enemies. These are either items which cannot be collected at all, either because they're permanently out of reach, completely obstructed by solid or deadly objects, or will softlock you if you attempt to collect them, or in the case of enemies, can't be killed with a gun, because there's no gun to kill them with. As two of the levels with enemies in them do not have a gun that you can properly acquire and then utilize. So ultimately, we're going to end up with four different maximum scores. The maximum you can get while sticking with safe items, the maximum you can reach if you collect all the unsafe items too, the maximum you can reach if you're going for deadly items, which is going to take some extra effort to figure out due to extra lives being a factor, and the invalid maximum, basically the maximum you can hit if every single item could be legitimately collected and every single enemy could be legitimately defeated. And again, this is with the stipulation that each secret level can only be visited once. So, with all of these stipulations in place, there's only one last thing to go over, and that's what everything's actually worth. Not counting the enemies, there are eight kinds of objects in the game which score points. Purple gems, blue diamonds, red diamonds, rings, crowns, scepters, trophies, and the level exit door itself. And purple gems are worth 50 points, blue diamonds are worth 100, red diamonds are worth 150, rings are worth 200, crowns are worth 300, scepters are worth 500, trophies are worth 1000, and then you also need the trophy for a level to open the exit door, which upon going through awards 2000 points. Keeping in mind, we won't be going through the exit door on the first run of a level that has a secret level attached. As for the enemies, they appear in most of the levels and are always worth 100 points times the level number. So in level 3, they're worth 300, and in the last level, level 10, they're worth 1000. 
Also, just to confirm things, I found a trainer and used it to give myself a gun in levels 4 and 9, the only levels where you can't normally shoot the enemies, and discovered that yes, even those enemies award points as expected when killed. Now, enemies also die if you touch them, but then they also kill you. So why don't you just do that to get the points when you can't shoot them? Eh, because killing them that way is worth nothing. So don't even try. Anyways, that's all the preamble. Now onto the levels themselves. Level 1. You can't even die in this level. It's just a single screen to introduce you to the most basic aspects of the gameplay, and it serves its purpose. Total attainable score for this level is 4200 points. Level 2. This level introduces stage hazards and also has multiple treasures which can only be obtained by losing a life in the process. Now, normally, it only leave this level with 3500 points, but if you were able to collect all of the deadly treasures, you'd be up an extra 750 points. It's just one problem. To collect every deadly treasure requires that you burn through four extra lives, and you only start the game with three extra lives. Now, since you only get awarded an extra life for every 20,000 points, it's impossible to collect every deadly treasure here on a legitimate run. Besides, we might not want to, depending on whatever's coming up. So for now, let's just keep going. Level 3. This level introduces the gun, the jetpack, and enemies. Now, pretty much everything here that isn't invalid is safe to collect, but take a look at the far right of the stage. There's a little 50-point gem hanging out way at the back of that fire corridor. Now, normally, it's a trap. You get your jetpack, you try flying down that way, and discover it was a virtually worthless dead end, then run out of jetpack fuel and fall to your doom. But I decided to find out once and for all. Is it possible to get that gem and not die? Yes. It is very possible to get that gem and have enough jetpack fuel to make it back and get through the exit door, but it is super tight. A single mistake and you'll likely not make it. So this is our first instance of an unsafe item. If you pass it up, you can squeeze 5700 points out of this level, 5750 if you do collect it. Also notice the scepters at the top, which are impossible to legitimately obtain, but if you could, that would be another 5000 points just waiting for you. Level 4. There's no gun in this level, but one enemy you have to deal with that can be very annoying. Now, I will tell you all right now, this enemy has a very simple pattern and a very simple methodology as to how it fires. Now, sit and watch it for a moment, and you'll see that dealing with it is really no big deal once you know how. Now, if you could kill it, that'd be an extra 400 points. But as it stands, you should be getting 8300 points out of this level without too much difficulty. Level 5. This level branches into a secret level, as do the final three levels, so it ultimately counts twice, save for the exit door, which only counts once. But for each individual run through the level, there is nothing that cannot be acquired, and no enemies you can't shoot down. Again, watch their patterns to learn how to deal with them. They spend a lot of time raised high, so stay beneath their vertical position, and jump and try to aim shots into their flight path. Overall, you should be getting 7,250 points from this level when exiting properly, 5,250 points if you warp into the secret level. Secret level 5. And this secret level is pretty simple, but it does have one particular diamond which you might think is perfectly safe to go for, except there's one catch. To safely go for it, you have to approach it from the right side, but immediately to the right is the door. Now you can only pass through the door without ending the level if you don't have the trophy but you can't actually get to this door without being forced to pick up the trophy. This means the only way to get this diamond is from the left, which requires a very tricky jump over that flame. So yeah, you can get it, but you're dead if you make even the tiniest mistake. If you decide to skip it, you'll get 5,950 points from this bonus stage, 6,050 points if you get the unsafe diamond. Oh, something else I should quickly point out, I've darkened the false floors on the maps that I've put together to better highlight where and where you can't actually stand. The false floors first show up here in the level 5 secret area, but in later levels, these false floors are going to get a bit extreme, so I wanted to make sure it was much more visually apparent what was going on with everything. Level 6. Now, something pertinent about this level is that it connects to the level 8 secret level off to the far right. Now, back in the original Apple II version of the game, you access the secret area specifically by going through the doorway without the trophy, as the warp zones off the edges of the screens didn't exist. 
However, because accessing the warp zone here in level 6 softlocks the game in a glitchy way, it's clear John Romero never intended this secret to be accessed in the original Apple II manner, especially given its redesignation as the level 8 secret level. So for those reasons, I'm not counting the secret area here as a part of this level. As for the rest of it, there's a single crown over in the bottom right section of the map that's extremely dangerous to go for, as you will die if you're more than a couple pixels off the mark with your jetpack movement. Otherwise, everything else is easy to get, enemies are fairly easy to kill, just dodge their shots and shoot. And this level's not too bad, and getting the safe score of 9,850 points is very doable. 10,150 points if you manage to also get that unsafe crown. Level 7. Now remember, tap down the instant the level starts to safely fall to the bottom without losing control or getting killed by the nearby enemies. Now to deal with them, you want to try to be falling when shooting, with the enemies themselves dropping from the top of their elliptical movement patterns. Now for the third one, try to get to the bottom of the screen ASAP. And for the fourth one, jetpack up to the ceiling before scrolling it into view. Now there's nothing you can't get or shoot here, so do it right and you'll leave with 7,150 points that you didn't have before. Level 8. This level trips me up all the time, though I recently figured out how to more effectively deal with the enemies. For the first one, you want to stand at the bottom of the screen with the enemy just off screen and wait for it to shoot. Then scroll it on screen and time a shot to kill it as it should still be reloading. For the second enemy, fly high at first, then drop low once it shoots and get it from below. For the third enemy, fly under it to the right side to get a better vantage point for defeating it. Now once you know how to deal with the enemies, the rest of this level's a cinch, and you should rack up 7400 points. Secret level 8. Now this level is freaking loaded. 26 rings, 20 scepters, and 64 crowns. Everything is collectible, and there's a grand total of 37,400 points available to grab. Now that said, it can be a little tricky not dying in the left half of the level, Really, just remember that so long as you're holding jump and moving right off of the rightmost pillar right before the trophy, you can get back up into the upper section pretty safely. The rest is just basic jumping. Also, the low floating rings may look deadly, but you can touch and collect items which are right beneath your feet without having to jump down. Thus why everything here is perfectly collectible. Level 9. <laughs> oh boy, level 9. Okay, so this is the level that throws the biggest wrench into this entire maximum score ordeal for so many reasons. Well, first though, I want to quickly point out that there's not only a lot of false floors, but there's also an entire section off to the far right, including some purple gems which spell out the word lane for some reason. Not quite sure what's up with that. In any case, one of the first things you're going to notice here is that all the enemies are marked invalid even though there's a gun which looks perfectly obtainable. Well, there's a problem with acquiring the gun. If you do, you're softlocked. That little pit the gun is in cannot be escaped from. If you fall in there, that's it. Run over, hit F3 and restart. But you're probably also looking at that pit and seeing those two unsafe rings and wondering how that's even possible. Well, this goes back to that glitch I mentioned, where with pixel-perfect positioning, uh, seriously, this is pixel accurate, you can fall down the side of this wall and then jump back up it. Unfortunately, this doesn't get you close enough to touch the gun, and if you were to attempt it, you'd get trapped. Plus, since this is pixel accurate, if you're off by one pixel or more to the left, you're again not getting out of that pit. Very unsafe. Actually, you'll notice another ring right over here, which is obtained in much the same way. It's marked unsafe because the enemies here shoot very fast, and so if your timing's even slightly off, they're gonna get you. Not to mention, if you end up down there without being able to use the glitch to escape, you're gonna be forced to die anyways. That's why a couple of those red diamonds are marked as deadly, as is the purple gem in the bottom left of the map. You'll also notice a couple diamonds marked as invalid simply because they're impossible to reach. A diamond here that's extremely risky to acquire since you'll be forced to lose a life if you don't time your fall into it and away from it perfectly. And a couple more unsafe diamonds because they force you to deal with the enemies, which are again incredibly difficult to dodge. Now, the last thing to point out is this scepter right here. Now at first, it's going to seem unobtainable and that it should be marked as invalid, and normally it would be, except when you jump directly into a ceiling, you get an extra pixel of distance before you start falling. 
This single pixel of distance makes it possible to get this scepter with a perfectly timed jump into the ceiling while moving forward. And since there's no danger in missing this, it's perfectly safe to try again and again until you finally get it. Ultimately, level 9 has 10,900 points you can legitimately acquire without doing anything unsafe, an extra 950 points to grab if you go for the unsafe items, an extra 350 points you can additionally get if you're willing to burn a minimum of two extra lives, and if you hack the game or use a trainer to get yourself a jetpack and or gun, there's 5,900 points to be scored from grabbing the otherwise unobtainable items and from killing the enemies. Secret level 9. This place is tiny and straightforward, with 6,200 points to grab and some easy obstacles to dodge. Kind of underwhelming, but hey, points are points. Level 10. This place is quite the technical challenge and requires some clever jumping, conservative jetpack usage, and careful aiming of your gun to survive. Now, many of the enemies have some tricks for getting by them. The first one you're likely to come across can't shoot over a particular wall, but sticks out above said wall, thus a carefully placed shot can take it out. There's also an enemy near the end that's seemingly impossible to get past, except it very, very briefly edges onto the left side of the screen when it's scrolled into the proper position, where it's vulnerable for just one frame, and will almost certainly be unable to shoot back. So just take your time and hold the fire button down until it finally dies. Ultimately, there's 13,950 points worth of treasures and enemies, as well as 600 points locked away in a few unobtainable items. And finally, Secret Level 10. And this is a pretty tricky secret level, with a crown that's pixel precise to pick up without dying, and a few treasures which are impossible to grab without losing a life. Two lives in total to grab them all. Thus, a safe run through will get you 5,500 points, an extra 300 for the unsafe crown if you go for it, and 450 points for burning two extra lives to grab the deadly items. Thus, with all of these numbers tallied up, we can see for ourselves all the potential point values on screen now, and the totals are 164,750 points when going only for the safe stuff, 167,400 points when also going for the unsafe items, 169,300 points if you were to get all the deadly items as well, and finally, if you managed to hack the game so you could collect everything and kill everything, you'd arrive at 187,700 points. But, there's one final thing we need to do, because the deadly score of 169,300 points is impossible. To achieve it and still clear the game, you'd need to burn 10 extra lives, but you only start the game with 3 extras, and only get another extra for every 20,000 points. Now, true, even on a safe run, you'd theoretically be getting a total of 8 additional lives to make for a total of 11 extra lives, because even though the score visually caps at 99,999, it does still keep track beyond that and will award extra lives appropriately. But ultimately, it comes down to where and when you get those points for the extras as to whether or not you can burn the lives to make that deadly score happen. That said though, there's only three levels with deadly items. Level 2, Level 9, which we can play twice, and Secret Level 10. Level 2 requires four extra lives to get all the treasures, which is simply not possible to have that early on. So, of the deadly treasures available, one life will get us three diamonds for 300 points, another gets us two diamonds for 200 points, another gets us a red diamond for 150 points, and the last gets us a single regular diamond for 100 points. So we ultimately want to skip that singular diamond, thus removing 100 points from the final deadly maximum, bringing it down to 169,200 points. But then, is it possible to get enough lives for the rest of it? A really important consideration here is that there's a cap of 3 extra lives at a time. Well, at least, there is in the version I'm playing. The lives counter can technically show 4 lives at a time, as I found out while using that trainer I downloaded, but under normal gameplay, getting enough points for an extra life with 3 extras in hand just gives you nothing. Now, If you follow the score totals and lives count for a deadly items run on a per level basis, we end level 1 with 4200 points and 3 extra lives, level 2 with 8350 points and 0 extra lives, Level 3 with 14,100 points, level 4 with 22,400 points and 1 extra life, level 5 to the secret warp with 27,650, secret level 5 with 33,700, 
Level 5 to the door with 40,950 and 2 extra lives. Level 6 with 51,100. Level 7 with 58,250. Level 8 to the Secret Warp with 63,650 and 3 extra lives. Secret Level 8 with 101,050 points, but still only 3 extra lives. Level 8 to the door with 108,450. Level 9 to the Secret Warp with 118,650 and 1 extra life remaining. Secret Level 9 with 124,850 and 2 lives remaining. Level 9 to the door with 137,050 and 0 lives remaining. Level 10 to the Warp with 149,000 and 1 extra life. But then we hit secret level 10, where we need to burn two extra lives to get 450 extra points, and there's not enough points in the level to get that second extra life we need. Now, skipping any of the lives burned on level 2 would be pointless because of the missed extras up to this point. But would skipping any of the extras from level 9 help? Well, to be frank, no. One of the lives we can avoid burning on level 9 only awards us 50 points, but then here on secret level 10, we have that same point award from one of the lives we'd need to burn, so we might as well just skip it, thus missing out on another 50 points from the final total. Thus, we end secret level 10 with 155,200 points and 0 extra lives, then finally finish level 10 proper with 169,150 points and 1 extra life. And here's the final maximum potential scores again, with the adjusted deadly items count. So, now that we've figured all of this out, you're probably asking yourself, what was even the point to all of this? Well, I didn't really have one. I just find figuring out stuff like this fun, because I'm weird like that. Although it would be nice if someone could patch the DOS version of the game at some point to add in a sixth digit to the score counter, because then it'd be possible to actually track and confirm all of this. But yeah, I just wanted to do this because I like having fun with numbers like this. Anywho, that'll be all for this episode of ADG Pro. Next Saturday will be a review, and we're going to be taking a look at a game which features a quote-unquote pleasure dome. And no, it's not the game you think it is, so be sure to stay tuned to see what I've got in store for you all. Thanks for watching, everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small random set of you guys.